As just now mentioned, there is many landmark buildings surrounding. The most iconic one is the one Sultan Abdul Samad Building. This is the Malaysia most iconic building before the Petronas Twin Towers exist. It used to house the office of British Colonial Administration or and the court. Now it's house of the Ministry of Tourism, Art, Culture. Short is Motek. Before the Sultan Abdul Samad Building is built, the one acres of land here are actually belongs to the Chinese captain, the Captain Yap Alloy. The British then bought over with fifty Swiss dollar. The construction of the building used four millions of brick to build which create a new place in KL named Brickfield, which is a brick factory. The buildings are built by Chinese contractor company. The British see the Chinese worker is built with Kung Fu. One throw and another one catch. One throw and another one catch. Repeating like this to pass the brick using Kung Fu. And it's believed that no brick is fall or broken. The speed is faster than expected. Took three years to complete at 1897. The cost of the construction is 152,000 Swiss dollar. Some people might think so cheap. That time, one Swiss dollar is like equivalent to today 1,000 baht. So if today this building would easily cost 152 million. Is also the first building in Malaysia have the toilet bowl flushing system. The building is designed by British architect Abby Habak and AC Norman. The architect are Northern Indian influence, the Saracenic, Neo Mughal, and Moorish Islamic style. Saracenic is good for ventilation and lighting purpose which have wide veranda of 2 meter and many arch the horseshoe arch, keyhole arch, OG arch style and new Mughal style is like Taj Mahal the Moorish Islamic style also known as Western Islamic architecture have a symmetry design and the red brick with white plaster arch sometimes referred to as blood and bandage style from high up area view, drawn view, the building is a F shape, means Federated Malay State. The building is light up at night, very contrast in the dark sky. The 41 meter high clock tower, which is often called as the Big Bang of Malaysia. The clock tower has four faces. It over a century old and it still tell time. It rings every hour. Tong! The top of the tower has a Cooper dome, but last time it's actually black color. Cooper one is a friendship gift from Australia, it's later one. The building also has a long arcade with 22 arches and a Cooper dome at each end. At this day, the moment you found there is a clock tower, uh, that means there is a city center of that particular town because watches are very expensive at that time. In those days, beside a clock tower, usually come together with a fountain. In front there, there is a colonial old Victoria fountain too, which serve another purpose to feed the horse. Where horse is the main mode of transportation in the past, the elite tie their horse at a fountain for the horse to drink the water. It's just like today we parking our car and pump the petrol. Okay, beside the fountain, there is a 100 meter high flat pole, which is one of the tallest in the world, built during the fourth Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mate Muhammad. He promoted the idea of Malaysia Bole, which means Malaysia can do it. So most of the things Tun Dr. Mahathir built want to be number one in the world. Next is the Kuala Lumpur City Gallery. It used to be the government printing office where official document, newspaper were printed. The gallery has many models of Kuala Lumpur interactive display, map, photo, video that tells the story of Kuala Lumpur from the past to the future development. It has a giant I love KL sign out there where you see everybody is lining up to take that photo. 
Uh, there, there is also a cafe you can enjoy an afternoon high tea. British people like the afternoon high tea culture. Try out their specialty of durian shaped cake and three layer tea and more. Entrance fee is 10 ringgit, open until 6 30.